Coming to you live from 1SCO, it's taking control! Welcome back everybody and thank you for joining us for episode 49 of Taking Control. I'm Anthony Keen, uh, an SEO strategist here at 1SEO and I'm joined by Chris Sherlow who is a content writer and softball stud on our 1SEO <laughs> softball team. Ah, you flatter me, sir. <laughs> Chris, no, uh, thank you so much for coming on this week. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Chris is going to be a great guest this week because sort of the sole focus of this week's episode is going to be all about content, content marketing. Um, and, and how content kind of ties into everything helps fuel the digital marketing campaign. Uh, so we have a lot to cover. We have a lot of great uh, experts that are going to be on this week as well, which will be fun. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for joining. This is Taking Control. Uh, it is our weekly web series presented by WannaCO where we cover all things IT and digital marketing. Uh, we have a, a variety of segments. We, we try to hit on a lot of the newer news topics that are out every week. Uh, so it's a, it's a great time every Thursday at 1.15. So thank you guys for being here. Um, before we get into it, and I pass it over to, to Bernie and Annalisa for this week's whiteboard segment, I do want to mention, as always, that one SEO is hiring for both the IT side and the digital marketing side. Uh, I'm in a, on the SEO team. Chris here is on the content team. So there's, you know, we've got PPC openings, content marketing, email marketing, SEO, uh, IT, desktop support technicians, you know, pretty much a variety of, of positions. So feel free to check that out if you want to come work with Chris and I and, and play on our softball and team. play on our softball team yeah that's uh we're, we're looking for good softball players absolutely so. we can use any anybody we can get yeah some ringers uh so one seo.com slash careers to check out all of the open positions so without further ado I'm actually going to shoot it over to Bernie and Annalisa who are two of our senior content uh, marketers here at one seo who are going to do this week's whiteboard segment so guys you'll need this Bernie Annalisa take it away where's mine oh Sorry, here you go, Annalisa. Woo! All right, hi, I'm Bernie, the Director of Content and Social Media Marketing here at 1SEO. And I'm Annalisa, I'm the Managing Editor of Content and Social Media Marketing. And today we're gonna to talk to you about how to write an optimized web page. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing you wanna do when you're writing an optimized web page is to know what you're gonna talk about and state that clearly and explicitly in the title of the page. Um, in the biz, we call those H1s, right? Right there at the top of the page. Yep. Um, but let's get into why they matter real quick. So if you've ever Googled anything, or if you've ever asked Google a question, you're gonna find that no matter what, some of the first things that come back are gonna be answers to a question. And that's because someone's already written an optimized web page addressing a question. Um, but, you know, let's just talk about how to structure that page in general, right? So when you're, when you're laying all your stuff out in the beginning, you wanna make sure that you're focusing on Readability. That's both for the bots and for the end user who's coming to your site to read your page. Mm -hmm. The best way to do that is to lay it out before you get started. Um, and we have a blog on this on the website, which we'll link to in the description. But for now, let's, uh, let's lay it out here. So the first 200 words of that page, you're going to make sure that you're answering a question, right? Um, spend 200 or so words kind of talking about, in general, like the different kinds of answers you could have. So if you're talking about why would I feed a dog, you want to feed a dog to make sure that it's healthy, to maybe make take care of its teeth, mm -hmm. to make sure that its fur stays shiny. Yep. There's a million reasons. You want to address all the answers to that question right here in the first 200 words. Um, the second thing you want to do is make sure you're explaining why it matters in that next 200 words. Uh, that's just, you know, providing more value. Um, so, you know, you don't want your dog to not get food because then its teeth are going to fall out. Its coat is not going to look well. Um, it's going to die. Um, not to get two more, but I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's just basically what we mean by explain why it matters. Mm -hmm. And you're always gonna run, wanna wrap things up with a conclusion and a CTA, a call to action. You know, to learn more, call here, link to a contact page on your site. But the best way to go about doing that is to make sure that you're avoiding blocks of text and you're using a lot of headers, right? Mm -hmm. So answer the question. Like I said, if we're writing a web page about how to write an optimized web page, this is gonna be our title right here, how to write an optimized web page. My first header is gonna be answer a question. Right? My second header is going to be explain why it matters. And then towards the end, I'm obviously not going to call it a conclusion, but I might want to say something like information or something like that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. All right, Annalisa, what are some other things we want to keep in mind when we're writing our own optimized web pages? I am so glad you asked. So the first thing that we have to keep in mind is keyword distribution. So let's say you're writing about feeding dogs. The feeding dogs appears only in the first 200 words of your page. That's not going to work. 
Google's bots are not going to see any relevant content down here. Neither are your human users who want to see that you're talking about what they came here for all throughout the page. If you've got any internal links hiding down here that you want people to navigate to, like the contact page, they're not going to see it. So you have to make sure that your keywords are distributed evenly throughout your content. Mm -hmm. yep. Secondly, you also want to keep in mind that just as humans are smart and have different words for the same thing, so do Google's bots. So for example, you could say dog, you could also say canine, you could say pooch, you could even say Popper. man's best friend. Yeah. Popper. <laughs> Most importantly, you can say pupper. Right. And what do we call that in the biz? Semantics. Semantics. Um, so just for anybody out there that still is pretty unclear about what we mean, a dog is also a canine, um, it's also a pooch, man's best friend. Say the same thing a bunch of different ways, that way it comes back for more and more relevant things, right? Mm -hmm. You want to maximize the, the relevancy that you can have for any web page. And the best way to do that is to make sure you're paying close attention to your semantics, your keyword distribution, which we call linear distribution now, right? Yep. That's something we're paying for, that's, you know, she's leading the charge on that and we're taking it very seriously internally. Um, and as is any you know, respectable digital marketing agency, that's big moving forward too. Um, and the last thing we want to talk about is internal linking, right? Absolutely. So you want to make sure that all your pages on the website are going to talk to one another, which means you're going to want to make sure that any page that's about you know, dog food, you want to link to something like you know, dog uh, I don't know, wee pads or dog toys yep. or dog beds. Um, yep. Really you want to keep everything in line, make sure the best pages are saying the right things to one another to make sure that, you know, to use a, an internal term or a, an industry term, hierarchy, you want to make sure that hierarchy is as solid as it can be. Absolutely. And you want to make sure that your page is as readable as it can be and as relevant for both the bots and the end users. Mm -hmm. And um, you also want to make sure that your internal links are as evenly distributed as your keywords to maintain that relevancy and visibility on the page. All right. Yep. Um, that's it. Welcome back to this week's episode of Technologically Speaking. Hopefully you had a great Memorial Day weekend. Of course, what do we hear about this weekend again in the news? Another hack, another compromise that might make your business, or in this case, even your home vulnerable. You have a router that sits inside of your office or home, and this router shares the internet across all of your devices and also provides a level of security. These routers, hundreds of thousands of them, are currently being compromised. If the brand router you have is a Cisco, a Netgear, a TP-Link, just, just to name a few, um, you, might want to re you might want to consider rebooting that device, whether it's your home or your office. Once you reboot your device, you can no longer be compromised with this current hack that's going on. The reason why is that our government was able to shut down the server that these devices connected to over in Russia or whatever country it was in. So as soon as you reboot, the compromise is now out of your system and you don't have to worry about it any longer. So we wanna make sure that you go ahead and you reboot your firewall devices, again, whether it's your home or your office. Failure to reboot, they don't really know what's gonna happen yet, but I don't think you wanna find out either. We'll catch you next week on Technologically Speaking. What's up party people? BJ's back with Rachel and it's another segment of Digital Plus. First on the list, Facebook is marking political posts. But are you surprised? I can't be. Certainly not. Facebook labels everything out. BJ, what do you think? I think that it's an effort, you know, to draw a line in the sand between what's political and what's not because in today's world, especially how things are right now, mm -hmm. uh, everything's kind of blurred. So who am I to know what's real, what's not, and what's political and what's not? So I appreciate Facebook actually going this extra step. And this is also, I think, part of Facebook's plan to make Facebook more of a not creative, but more of a personal social platform instead of just ads, 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 video content, ads, ads, ads. Um, I know Zuckerberg and his team are trying really hard to make it more personal, um, you know, talk to your friends, blah, blah, blah. So I think that definitely falls within this category as well. Now I'm down with it. Moving on to number two, Uber installs a panic button in the app. So what's happening with Uber now is that as most people keep the app in front of them, they leave reviews, they give the extra tip at the end, uh, but now there's a panic button inside that. It's not something you can just hit and it goes to 911, but instead you slide this button, uh, it goes to 911, but the dispatcher now gets your information and the ride details, so they have 
all this information on you in a second's notice as opposed to you having to dial 911 and tell them something had happened. Um, so God forbid something does happen, you knew how now that's at your disposal. Yeah, and I think this is really good for Uber, adding that secondary safety precaution if you feel unsafe or if you're having an emergency. Um, I think this is Uber kind of making their credibility a little bit more positive. Also, BJ, we've been talking about Uber a lot mm -hmm. these past few weeks, mm -hmm. so like snaps to them for keeping themselves relevant. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see. No, if it's used. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that can't hurt. I think by them adding it, it just establishes them even more so as a brand. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you don't ever have to use it. No, I hope nobody we hope has to use it. none of you it. have to use it, but like, it's there. Story number three! Number three! Woo! And it's in headlines again, but not in the right light. Tell them why, Rach. Do you know your echoes are recording you? But are you surprised? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not either. Take it away, You DJ. can't be. You just can't be. In today's world, you're signing up for Apple accounts, Facebook accounts, and giving away all that information. You give up your privacy so they can market you and bring you a better end user experience. And unfortunately, all that information is in the fine print. Do we read the fine print? Nobody does. You hit agree, you scroll to the bottom, you hit accept. It is what it is, but they're in the headlines because a few people say, oh, they're recording this, and maybe one or two people proved it, but they deemed it a false positive, meaning that those of us who don't speak up, uh, they might have heard Alexa in some way, shape, or form, or Echo, depending on what your trigger word is, and it just kept a recording. It only happened a few times, but it's enough for the media to want to run with it. So if you take to Google, Google how to turn it off. There are ways you can um, edit the settings on your Echo to make sure this doesn't happen, but in Echo's defense, they didn't do it on purpose. You know, these artificial intelligence intelligences, they're only as, you know, 100% as we make them to be. It's all technology. Um, yes, we live in a tech world, but it's only 2018, so we're still progressing. Absolutely, we're destined for so much more. But as we sign up for this stuff, we have to make sure that we're aware this stuff could possibly happen. So with that being said, that's this week's Digital Plus. We'll catch you guys next time. Rachel, BJ, thank you guys so much for the Digital Buzz this week. So. I am back with, with Chris here, and we are sort of gonna round out this week's episode, episode 49 of Taking Control, where you know the, the core focus of this week has been content. Um, you know, when you look at like a digital marketing campaign, you know, there's SEO, there's PPC, there's content, there's social, and it's it's also integrated nowadays and, and everything kind of works together. You know, the content helps support a lot of the SEO. So I think when just taking kind of a quick step back, like when you look at content marketing in general. There's a, a lot of different facets to just that one piece, right? So Absolutely. content marketing could be like website content, for example, uh, which would be the content that lives on your website. Um, it could be in the form of an infographic. It could even be in the form of like a video. It could be, you know, it can be obviously various articles, blogs or, or content marketing. So I think there's a lot of different components to it and they really all help support each other. So when you look at the on-page content of a website, right, that helps drive the SEO because... I think if you if you take a step back again and, and think about how a bot crawls a website, how do you kind of convey that you are the expert and that you should be ranking for, for certain things or you should be found relevant for certain terms and that's within the content, right? right. You're, you're telling the bots, hey, this is what this page is about, this is what we do or these are the areas we serve or whatever it might be and I think that that is a perfect example of kind of how it helps fuel the SEO exactly. uh, for and the on page. Exactly, and we do it through uh, through strong wording. You know, we uh, we we are very particular and um, decisive when we do this kind of stuff because we do want uh, you know we do want the bots to to know where we are, uh, what areas we're servicing. Yep. We want to be we want to be viewed as a uh, you know an authority figure. Definitely. Okay, that's why we do blogs. We do a lot of stuff about. You know, say if you're an HVAC um, provider, service provider, we're going to say, talk about when's the best time of year to maintenance your system, yep. you know, or your heating system, or we're going to talk about, you know, uh, this is a bad time of year for uh, flooding and for plumbing and stuff Definitely. like that. So um, all this stuff, uh, and we try to mix it up. We have not only blogs, we do uh, cool things like infographics where we have just a uh, little, sh well, you know, we all know what one looks like, but... Um, but we have a lot of time making those and uh, we have a lot of fun kind of like just ba basically developing all these different strategies sure. to, to, you know, to uh, basically help the SEO and strengthen it. Yeah, I think a, a key word that you mentioned too is, is authority, right? So Absolutely. It, it's, it's tough because a lot of people get stuck in this, this loop of just creating content, I feel like for the sake of creating content. Exactly. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, you hope that people are reading it and you hope that people start to, to view you as an expert, as an authority in that space, whether that is HVAC or whether it's digital marketing or if you're a lawyer or whatever it might be, you know, providing that that beneficial content that's going to either bring them back for more um, or is going to, to solve a need. You know, a, a lot of times 
you know, people turn to Google or Bing or whatever it might be for, for everything. Literally, if they have a question, they're going to Google it. You know, if, if they're have, have a question for, for legal standing or whatever it might be, they're probably going to end up on a lawyer's blog that's answering that question. Absolutely. You know, so I think it, it's not so much creating content for the sake of creating content, but rather to become that authority. And then on the other side of it, it's brand awareness as well. You know, absolutely. this content can now be repurposed. It can be used on social media. You know, it can be, it can live on the blog of your website. So I think, um, you know, it, it's a key component to realize that the content is going to serve multiple purposes as well. So. Absolutely. You're absolutely right, Anthony. It's more about so much more about just jamming keywords into yeah. some kind of page or, or any kind of, uh, any kind of piece really. We try to make stuff as compelling as possible because we want, you know, users to, to look on the page. We want them to, you know, stay on the page for longer. And we do that by actually writing stuff that's good to, good to read, that's interesting. You know, we, uh, we mix the topics up every time we write about something. And like I said, while we're creating a brand awareness and authority, where it's actually something that somebody wants to read. Definitely. You know, so, and that, that, that you know, I mean, right there helps helps everybody. Yeah. You know? and, and another thing that, you know, we, we certainly take into consideration and is important to take into consideration is just the idea of semantics and, and how far the search engines have actually come with recognizing, you know, like terms and things like that. So what I mean by that is, you know, it, it's, you know, perfect example, you said just jamming keywords in there, you know, it's, it, that's a practice of, of 10, 10, 15 years ago that used to, to work really well. But now it's more about providing helpful content, providing that relevant content. And a big piece of that is using semantic terms. So when you look at, you know, you don't just want to say that you're an AC company or, or, or brand yourself as an HVAC company, you know, people are searching as a, you know, looking for contractor or they might be looking for HVAC expert, you know. So it's important to kind of use all of these different terms uh, throughout the content to make sure that you, you're sort of casting a wider net, if course, you will, of course. Look, for how people search, especially with the rise of voice search, because people are just speaking into to the search engines now, you know, so it's literally, you have to kind of catch how they're speaking just naturally. Of course, you're so. absolutely right. And also, uh, don't forget about locations. Locations, oh. big deal with, uh, with keywords, okay, because somebody might be saying, okay, I need a, you know, I need a plumber in, in Burlington County or something like mm -hmm. that, and that's why... Uh, we're going to use those kind of semantics to, yep. to uh, you know, to help our businesses get located like that. Yeah, no, content is a is a great way to sort of establish your service area, right? Absolutely. Because if you think about it, okay, so Google knows where your business is located physically. They know your address, but how do they know what areas you service, right? They're, they're not just going to guess. You you kind of actually have to lay out that roadmap and of say, course. hey. We're, we're willing to go into these five counties because it's listed on our website. You know, we service these five counties or whatever it might be. Now the bots are going to start to crawl that content. They're going to start to see the areas that you service and they can sort of piece together that service area. Whereas before, if you're not talking about the areas that you service, if you're not letting the bots know and the people know, Google's not just going to guess that you service Burlington County. So uh, that is a, a really great point. So Yeah, and some of these places are, you know, are really have wide uh, service areas so it's yeah. important to just just because they have one facility even in, in you know one certain county they could have another facility in, in another county who's also serving all those surrounding you know surrounding areas yeah. too so basically it's like two uh, you know two like focal points where they're kind of branching right. out which is very important uh, to you know to just let everybody know like what you know that you're around and that you can you know you're not just in a city you're over yep, yep. you can you know what I mean you can uh, service your whole area definitely basically. definitely uh, and then and then lastly you know one of the bigger pieces I know from the SEO uh, side of things is just we all know that backlinks are one of the biggest driving factors, one of the biggest driving ranking factors, uh, rather. So basically what that means is, is inbound links to your website from other websites. So if other websites, the Google sort of mindset is if other websites are sort of talking about you and are linking to you and are sending their visitors to you, then that's sort of, you're getting more votes for your website. So Google wants to boost you up over websites that, that might not be getting talked about or might not be getting links. And one of the, the best ways to go about getting backlinks nowadays is to create great shareable content. Absolutely. You know, if you're if somebody wrote an article and it's fantastic and you have an infographic that you've created that literally supports that article perfectly, you know, and would look great right in the middle of their article, it's a great way to say, hey, you know, I have an infographic that, you know, supports exactly what you were talking about. It, it backs up your point perfectly. If you want to feature it, go ahead. Or, you know, and it doesn't even have to be that direct. 
but just creating great content that people want to share. Um, perfect example and, and one of the biggest success stories of this is like if you look at BuzzFeed, you know, BuzzFeed creates articles that everybody shares. It's whether it's quizzes or, you know, find out what kind of a celebrity you would be or find out, you know, whatever it might be like these random viral things that people just love to share the results of or they love to share. Uh, that's sort of a, just a great content marketing approach. So when you look at from the SEO perspective, you know, obviously we want to we want to work keywords into the content. We want to let the bots know what's important. But you also have to look at the backlink perspective as well, because content can drive a lot of great backlinks to a website, too. Of course. And, you know, another thing about backlinks is that it's also about building relationships. Yes. So uh, and I mean, you know, you can. When you start to get that, um, you kind of can build on that and you can it can help you in the future and vice versa. You can wind up helping someone else. Definitely. Future, which yeah. is you know, which is key. Yeah, no, the the backlinks are, you know, gone are the days of, of where you can kind of put it on autopilot a lot of it like you said is is a lot of research it's a lot of getting to know people a lot of building that relationship and then in the end hoping that you know that it is beneficial for everybody so but yeah backlinks possibly a great core topic for another episode because <laughs> we could probably talk for for 20 minutes sure, on, on just I'm backlinks sure. but uh chris as far as the various types of content just trying to ask a personal question what do you prefer more of the the on page you know writing for i like to write blogs myself i okay. mean i do like to work with infographics because you get to say a lot in a little bit. You sure. Know? Yeah. Um, and, and of course, they have the they do have the graphics to kind of like drive your, your your text points home, if you will. But I love to write um, I love to write blogs because I come up with uh, strange and interesting topics. Yeah. And like I said, for me, a lot of this is about um, compelling the readers to be interested in. So I love to start out with like maybe a history of air conditioning, there you, you know, go. or something like that in, in my blogs and kind of get, get people informed and, and interested in the topic and also help them. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my awesome. thing, I think, blogs for sure. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Uh, so Chris, thank you so much Thanks. for being on for being on this week's episode. Thanks we hope for everybody me. yeah, we hope everybody uh, learned a little bit of something about content marketing. Um, and, and just kind of how I think it's important, again, when you look at the digital marketing sort of landscape where things are going, how everything ties together, it's certainly a piece that you cannot forget about or, or leave out. Um, so content marketing. But thank you guys for, for watching episode 49 of Taking Control, and we will be back next Thursday. See you guys out. See you guys.